Hello everybody! In this episode I'm going to talk to you about classes in C++. Why do we have classes in C++? Well, because C++ is an object-oriented language. So what you have to do is object-oriented programming, which stands for OOP. Uh, and the way that you do object-oriented programming is by creating objects. And the way you do that is using classes. So how do we define a class? How do we do declare one? We first specify that it's a class, and then we give it a name, and then using curly braces, we specify that everything inside of this is inside of a class. Two things that a class always has, whether you've uh, specifically set that, uh, when you, whether you specifically want to change it or not, is a constructor and a destructor. A constructor will be called whenever a version of the class, an instance of the class is created. So this function will always will be called whenever the object is created. And a destructor will always be called when an um, object gets out of scope or gets deleted. So then you can do some cleanup code to delete some variables that you need to delete or reset some things. Um, one thing that a class is going to have is uh, member variables. Those are variables that uh, differ per instance of the class. So for instance, we have four different enemies and they all have their own version of health. It's all called health. The variable is all called health and it's all the same type, but the values can be different. Then we have uh, the different type of specifications that you can do to uh, change how the variables and functions can be accessed. We have the private keyword, we have the public keyword, and we have the protected keyword. Private means that only and only uh, these functions and variables can be called inside of this class. So only this class is access. Public, public means that everyone, that uh, everywhere that this class is created and everything that has access to the class can also get access to, the, uh, to this variable or function. So basically our main functions that we want to call from our main program should be public. But our variables like health and money or whatever, or lives, all need to be private because we don't want our main program to change it. Then we also have the protected keyword. I'm not going to go into de uh, detail on the protected keyword just yet. I'm going to do it in a later episode when I'm going to talk about inheritance. So when I'm going to talk about having a class that depends on another class. I know it sounds crazy, but it's it's going to be something. <laughs> okay, so here is a little example of how to create a class. So I specified first that I wanted, well, I wanted to be a class with the class keyword. Then I gave it a name, my class. Then uh, inside the curly braces is the, the scope of the class. So everything that's specified between these curly braces is going to be a part of the class. Then I started with the public keyword. This is really important, otherwise uh, we cannot create one since the, we cannot create an instance of the class since the constructor is private. So only this class can create this class and things are going to be messed up. So I've added a public keyword, which we need to end with uh, a double dot. Uh, then I've created a constructor. The way that you know it's a constructor is, is because the, it is the exact name of the class without anything in front of it. So no specifier return type. Uh, and the destructor is uh, exactly the same as the constructor, but with a tilde in front of it. If you don't know where the tilde is, it's, it's uh, underneath the escape key next to the one. And you need to access it using a shift. Uh, then I've created a little function called void, uh, a void function, so it doesn't return anything, called do stuff. Um, and then I've created some private variables. So I specified the private keyword. And then I specified the variables that I want to have. So let's say I've created an int called important value because we needed something important and a boolean like should do stuff. Okay, let's now get into the code and actually uh, make a class. So let's head over to Visual Studio. Oh, I still need to create. Uh, I still need to create my main file. So let's do that quickly. Main .cpp. Which I can include, iostream, 
I've got and string. We're always going to need those. Then we're going to also use uh, using namespace std and then avoid no an integer main then return zero okay so this is our main file nothing important is going to happen here yet the one thing that we're going to do is we're going to press right click on the project so as you can see here in the solution explorer it might be on that side for you i always move it to the left side i find that more useful but you can just grab the top thing and then drag it around uh, so it's probably on this side for you right now but I just dragged it over to this side okay okay so what we're now gonna do is we're gonna press right mouse button on um, tutorial 04 in my case but whatever your project is name is and then we're gonna do uh, then we're gonna go to add class we're gonna select the C++ class and now we can give it a name. So let's create let's create an animal. So then we type in animal or our class name. You can make whatever class you want, but I'm gonna make an animal. And uh, as you can see, we can specify some other things here, like a base class that's for inheritance. We're gonna talk about that later. Uh, access public. You can uh, check. Uh, you can select whether. Everyone should, uh, everyone should be able to create an animal or only an animal should be able to create an animal or only yeah inherited classes of animals should be able to create an animal so we're just going to select public since we just want to create an animal everywhere if we want to the cpp file and the h file are all just fine uh, we don't need a virtual destructor and it doesn't need to be in line we're going to talk about this later in a later episode we're first going to just talk about basic classes then we hit finish and now we've created a class so uh, as you can see so we have an animal.h file which contains a class then uh, the curly braces public and then the constructor and the destructor but we also have a cpp file why do we also have the cpp file well when it comes to classes it's really important that you uh, create the functions outside of the header file a header file should only be the, the .h stands for header. A header file should only be used to uh, like specify things. So, for instance, uh, specify the different functions that you have, the different variables that you have, and the actual code. Unless it can't be inside of the CPP file because of special reasons that we're probably going to get to in a later episode, uh, you need to write the code itself inside of the CPP file. Okay. So now we have our animal class. So let's create an instance first in our main function. So let's create an instance first in our main function. But if we just type animal on here, we, we're not gonna see it. Why do we not see it? Do you remember that I said there were two different types of includes? We're now gonna need the second type. So we're gonna do a pound include, and now we're gonna use the uh, double quotation marks and as you can see we can see animal.h there so what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in animal.h or click on it if you want to and then we're gonna include the animal class so now we should be able to type in animal and create an animal so now we've created an animal but this animal animal does not contain anything unless it is structure and we don't want to call it a destructor yet by the way, destructors will automatically be called whenever something gets out of scope. So when uh, when it comes to the main function, it will be automatically called whenever um, yeah the main function ends. So whenever it returns zero or whatever error code we had. Okay, so let's now create a function, a public function. Uh, it's going to be a void, and let's uh, let's call it make sound. We don't need to specify anything yet. Uh, it doesn't need it doesn't need any attributes because we uh, yeah we're just want to make sound. It doesn't need any specific anything specific for that. And let's also make a private. So we're going to specify the private keyword uh, string uh, uh, called sound. 
As you can see, string is not available, even though we've included string in iStream in here and even did using namespace std. But we haven't included them in this header. Um, these includes are um, only going to work in something that, uh, in the basically the file itself, unless you've uh, basically only in the file itself for now. <laughs> so we need to do the includes again. So we need to include string and we need to include IO stream, oh. uh, which you want to be on top because it's the longer one. And then we also need to specify using namespace std. So now we have a string called sound and we have a void make sound. But why does it have a weird green squiggly line underneath it? That's because uh, it isn't declared in here. The constructor and the destructor are declared, but the sound isn't declared. So what we can do is either go in here and type uh, animal doubles, uh, double, double dots and then make sound. We, oh, we can either do it like this or, oh, we need to specify the type. So it's a void. This works just fine. Or what we can do is we can right mouse button on the squiggly line thingy, then press quick actions and refact uh, refactorings, and then create definition of make sound in animal.cpp. And as you can see now, is there is a, a declaration now, the same as we just typed. Uh, but if, if this weird thing comes, like this weird blue things, that means that you're inspecting a different file from within a file. You can either just press escape to close it, or um, if we go to peak definition again, or we can press the uh, promote to document thingy to open the document itself. And now it's also gone. Okay, so now we've created a function. We're just going to use a simple console out uh, and then sound. And then we're going to use an end line. But our sign, uh, sound is currently specified to nothing, like it doesn't contain anything. So we're going to go to the constructor, since this will be called first. And what we're going to do in the constructor is we're going to say sound is equal to whatever sound we want to have. So let's create a sheep. So it's going to be, uh, can I do that thing on my computer? No, so just a meh. Uh, then the cow would work better, so boo. So we've created a sound, and now from within our main function, we can call animal.sound, make sound. But as you can see, we cannot find animal.sound. The sound is invisible. We cannot access it through the, uh, yeah, through the, the dot, which we normally use to uh, like find things inside of classes but we can find it inside of the class itself. So if you run this function right now, or this program right now, you will see that it will say moo. Ah, boo. Oh, I said boo, it needs to be moo. Sorry. Moo. It's a cow. A cow doesn't say boo, it said moo. Okay, so for cow and it says moo. So what you can also do is, uh, and this is going to be a preparation for the next tutorial, which we're going to explain inheritance, is we're going to also add a string called name. And we're going to do the same in the constructor. We're going to do name is equal to cow. Um, and uh, in make sound, we're going to add, oh, wrong one. We're going to add a few things. So we're going to add name and then uh, a, uh, double dots and a space. So it will say the name of the animal, then it will do a, a double dots and a space, and then the sound. So if you now run the program again, you will see that it say cow moo. So this is basically an explanation of classes. Let's go over it again. So in order to create a class, we go to the project itself, Right mouse button on it, add class, C++ class. We're going to specify the name. Nothing else is important right now. You only need to type in a name. Press finish. Then it will create a class for you. 
uh, you need to do your includes again. So if you need IO string or string, you need to include them again. And then you have the public keywords, and that will specify whether something should be accessible outside of the class. You have the private keyword, that means that it will only be accessible inside of this class. And then you have also an extra keyword called protected, and it will mean it will only be invis uh, visible in inherent classes. What we can do inside of classes is we can make functions, like we learned last episode, and we can make variables, like we learned in the first episode. And one thing that's really important in classes is just like you had with forward declaring functions inside of your main function. So you would make, uh, we would declare a function here and then type the rest down here. We need to do the same with classes, but we need to declare the functions inside of the header file and then type the code inside of the CPP file. And that's basically it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.